This episode is brought to you by Tesla Taxi Australia. Find out how you can save at the end of this video. Whilst the world has been focused on the devastating effects of COVID-19, massive bushfires and Black Lives Matter, our state and federal governments have been quietly progressing their agenda on selling Australia's future to the few, warming the planet and while well, spending the money that will be felt for many a generation. So just in case you haven't heard, under the guise of the recovery efforts needed post-COVID, would it surprise you that this gas-loving, climate-denying government think that they can throw some jobs to mates and say, hey, this is what we need to get the economy out of ICU. His words, not mine. So with some long-lasting implications, I think it's time that I did Promises is a segment I do from time to time about what our politicians are and generally not doing in the space of getting us to cleaner and greener ways of living and well, today I'm going to do a deep dive on the National COVID-19 Coordination Commission Manufacturing Recommendations. <laughs> That's a mouthful, isn't it? And before I go any further, yeah, I did promise to do a segment on this a few weeks ago, but I, like, I seriously got bored with it. And then I watched some really terrible, terrible TV read some really bad articles about it, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to cover it. So, I wrote a draft, about 6,000 words, I shot and edited about a 45 minute video, <laughs> and um, yeah, I sat on that one for a week, which my patrons got to see. Uh, so, yeah, I thought, no, I can do better, and well, hopefully, today, this is going to be it. The NCCC's Manufacturing Task Force published a draft paper on what Australia needs to get the economy going again. This PowerPoint presentation written by like a year 10 student has like two themes. One, how jobs can be created with gas. That's it. That's the second theme. Gas. Okay. Buildings, gas. Jobs. Gas subsidies, jobs. Relax gas regulations, jobs. Hmm. So what is the NCCC's advice for our economic recovery? First up, that states that have bans on coal seam gas projects, that's like fracking, must be scrapped. Sadly, just this last week, the New South Wales state government defeated a bill that would have temporarily stopped all coal gas seam projects in the state. What else is the NCCC suggesting? That federal government underwrite gas prices and massively subsidise costs and investment for gas companies. That public money be used to build transcontinental gas pipeline from Western Australia to South Australia and beyond. That government should scrap green and red tape on gas development. And whilst they're at it, relax Australian standards for equipment used in gas infrastructure. And the one that's really annoying me, a loosening of the environmental regulations and approval processes around gas. Now, if I sound like I'm mocking the NCCC and this paper, it's because, well, they deserve it. I mean, come on. The task is to provide a roadmap on the economic recovery of Australia, not just for gas companies and their shareholders, but for all Australians. So why and who is the NCCC? And why do they devote more than half of the 63-page document just to gas? Well, the answer lies with the NCCC board, which is primarily made of non-elected officials headed by Neville Power chair of the National COVID-19 Coordination Commission. He's a, like a former chief executive officer of a few steel companies and currently a director, shareholder and board member of Strike Energy, a company that aspires to be the lowest cost onshore gas producer in Australia. Suspicious yet? <laughs> it gets worse. Who else is on the NCCC board? A few fossil fuel industry execs, a few from the transport sector, a banker and, just for good measure, some ex-politicians. Supposedly, they consulted widely for this paper, more than a thousand if you believe Ned, but their consultation list reads like the who's who of the fossil fuel industry, like Rio Tinto, BHP, Shell, Aluminium Australia Council of Australia, the Cement Industry Federation, and Blue Energy, which despite the name is actually a gas and oil company. Yep, good consultation right there, folks. And might I say, it's refreshing to see a board made up of people who would most profit from these recommendations. Yeah, nine people deciding the fate of our climate and economy. So let's unpack the recommendations. First up, 
Oh, wait a second. <gasps> Australian taxpayers should fund a 2,500 kilometer pipeline from Perth to Adelaide and beyond and underwrite gas prices and help them build gas infrastructure and all the while relaxing safety standards and environmental safeguards. <sighs> Gosh, that was hard to say. Why? Money. Not that they don't already profit from $50,000 per minute in subsidies that they get from our government, which by the way, doesn't force them to pay their fair share of royalties, taxes, or profits from fossil fuels. I mean, come on, look at this. ATO data on some of our biggest gas companies shows that they paid little to no tax whatsoever compared to the hundreds of millions of dollars, wait, no, billions of dollars earned in Australia in just one year. Yep, they need more help from us little people, right? Because what does the NCCC say? Gas equals jobs? Well, how many people are employed in the gas sector? Drum roll. Oh, oh, uh... 10,000. Or put another way, just 0.2% of Australia's workforce. I'll say that again. Just 0.2% of our labour workforce. NCCC, NEV, how does a pipeline and more subsidies help Australians? So looking a bit deeper, I found that we export more than 70% of our gas in the form of liquid natural gas to Asia. It's worth more than $50 billion a year just in exports. Every Australian knows that our gas prices used to be cheap, but then gas export pricing was somehow magically linked to international gas markets. And well, what happened to our domestic gas prices? Which by the way, come from Australian soil they increased by 300%. Basically, they matched international sell prices. So that big pipe that Nev wants to, I mean, um, the NCCC, I mean, no, Angus Taylor, yeah, look, no, someone wants to build, isn't for the long-term growth of our nation. It's not to get more jobs, and nor is it to reduce gas prices for everyday Australians, no is to get gas to the distribution point for easy exporting to like international markets and therefore more money for those gas companies. And I haven't even started on how polluting gas is. The NCCC paper does not mention climate change, CO2 targets, emission reductions, nothing. But to do so would be admit that gas is not actually a good fuel. It's not a good transition fuel. It's not vital to our energy security. To start with, to get gas overseas in these polluting things, it needs to be converted to liquid natural gas. But before we get here, we first need to locate the gas, mine it, transport it, convert it to a liquid to make it more dense and able to be shipped to overseas markets. During all these processes, there's a, there's a need to vent, burn off, and allow for leakage of gas to keep it safe for those working nearby and to preserve equipment called fugitive emissions, they account for 1-9% to of total gas emissions. And what do you suppose Australian carbon emissions are for gas? 1.4 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. And the whole gas industry, more than 3.7 million tonnes in fugitive emissions were allowed to escape in just one year. The number I really want you to take away from this video and to make sure that your politicians understand it is that gas contributed about 7% to our national carbon emissions. And to add insult to injury, sorry to Mother Earth, leakage of methane, the primary component of natural gas, is 34 times stronger than CO2 at trapping heat over a 100 year period and 86 times stronger over 20 years. Whilst Angus Taylor and the NCCC would love you to think that gas is cleaner than coal, and it is by about 50%, but it's 32 times dirtier than wind power. And check out this chart by the Clean Energy Regulator, which tracks fugitive and fuel combustion emissions from gas. It's risen by 151% since 1990. And notice that massive rise from 2014? Well, it actually started in 2009 when seven new liquid natural gas projects came online, adding more than 64 million tonnes of annual production capacity. This has resulted in emissions from natural gas rising one, by 109% or 25.5 megatons equivalent of CO2 over this one period. No, gas is not clean. Gas is not without harm. And gas certainly isn't cheap. 
the NCCC's lack of transparency, absence of accountable governance, and stacked with gas-loving fossil fuel executives and annoyingly paid for by taxpayers like you and me, but not these guys, is cronyism dirty and something that needs to be called out. For a federal government held bent on gas, which I think is best summarised by Q&A host Hamish MacDonald. Can I just be clear for our audience though, watching tonight, I mean, it is not just you. The Prime Minister told the National Press Club in January that gas has a critical role to play. Nev Power, who heads the commission, uh, is talking about the options to connect our major demand centres with our major supply centres in terms of gas. Angus Taylor, uh, on April 23rd, has been talking about a gas-fired recovery. And as I mentioned, you told the National Press, Cl Press, Press Club in February, in the short term, natural gas will play that critical role. I mean, at a very senior level, there's a lot of consistency here about the role of gas. Comment below if you agree or disagree that Angus and Scott love this NCCC paper. To me, it's nothing more than the gas industry asking for even more money from taxpayers to increase their profits, drive up emissions and warm our planet. The paper's admission of manufacturing jobs in renewables, a sector according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, employed 26,850 full-time employees, or about 250% more than the gas sector. It's striking, isn't it? I mean, it's not as if the Australian government doesn't already have a roadmap on where to focus its efforts to not only provide new job growth, but also improve energy security, access cheaper electricity prices and lower emissions. I mean, what are they? The solar, wind, hydro, battery storage, renewable, renewably powered hydrogen. There's a lot more out there. And if you want to know what that looks like, please look down below where I've listed every single article that I've spoken to today with papers by AMO, CSIRO and more. And they provide a great roadmap of how we can get there to a cleaner, greener future without the need for gas. The Liberal National Party loves gas. Angus Taylor sees it not only as a vital fuel, but also as something that is part of Australia's future. And he said that gas already plays an essential role in energy reliability, but it could be even more important through a gas-fired recovery. We want to have demand for affordable gas matched with priority upstream investment opportunities to bring gas where it is needed and provide economic stimulus. See how this statement aligns with the NCCC's paper? By wanting gas, crafting papers that suggest gas, is not only committing Australia to century-long emissions, but also stranded assets which will have to be paid for by Australian taxpayers. Fast forward 10 or 20 years, transcontinental pipelines lay idle. And who paid for that? Gas processing plants prematurely decommissioned. Who pays for that? Offshore gas rigs scuttled to become artificial reefs. Who pays for that? Look at the overseas experience to see what these tax dodging, climate destroying gas companies are doing, leaving locals with their trash and just abandon them. The reality is this, the NCCC and Liberal National Party hopes of an economic recovery and future dependent upon gas, and it's sadly going down the wrong path. Gas emits no matter how you portray it, building a massive pipeline and more fracking stations, more gas power plants won't make electricity cheaper. We had the technology already which has demonstrated that it's cheaper to run, far cleaner and provides jobs to tens of thousands. So let's invest in that and get on with it. Okay, rant over. I do hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see what my 45 minute version of this video looks like, consider joining me on Patreon where you get exclusive behind the scenes content, news, polls, live Q&A sessions and what more. A big thank you to my producer level Patreons, Ashley Hill, Nigel Farrier and Tess from the Gong. For the rest of June, I'll be taking a little break from the YouTube and like in the past 15 months, I've made more than 130 videos, most of which have taken me at least like 16 hours to research, write, shoot, edit, and produce. So I'm gonna spend some time with my family, recharge my batteries, and return in July for a second season that's hopefully bigger and better than ever. And before I go, a quick thank you to Tesla Taxi Australia, who, if you've ever wanted to try a Tesla or own one and would like to earn some money from your car, check out these guys. They're available in Queensland, New South Wales, ACT, Victoria, and further afield. Just check the links below and save by using my referral code. Oh.